What's up everybody? We're back with day 111 of pedal steel every day. Today was an exciting day for my pedal steel journey because I had my first in-person pedal steel lesson. After networking with a few local pedal steel players, I came across the name Isaac Stanford. Isaac is a multi-instrumentalist, a pedal steel guru, and a member of Slowy and the Boats. I reached out to Isaac and asked if he could spare an hour of his time to give me his best tips about pedal steel and music in general. So after a little bit of planning, I hauled my steel over to the other side of Philadelphia and met with Isaac. After spending an hour learning from Isaac, I came away with three main takeaways. The first is that the primary focuses of every steel player should be rhythm, intonation and timing. Of these three, Isaac stressed the importance of intonation on pedal steel because without it, you're gonna sound out of tune on the instrument and you'll stick out like a sore thumb. Isaac compared the pedal steel guitar to the layer of icing on a good cake because it should only add to the textures of the rest of the band. Improper intonation on the pedal steel will distract the listener away from the most important part of the musical piece. The second and third components of this first takeaway, mainly timing and rhythm, kind of play hand in hand in that your rhythm is built on your timing. Isaac stressed to me the importance of using a timekeeping device like a metronome in order to internalize the changes on the pedal steel. The second main takeaway I got from my lesson with Isaac involved the website dronetool.com. Dronetool.com is a natural cello reference tone drone generator and Isaac told me he uses it to practice chord transitions and licks. I thought this website was actually pretty cool because even though you can download your own music, it's quick to reference and it, you can use any metronome BPM you'd like. Isaac also told me about another cool application he uses to slow down MP3 files and learn licks and chord progressions. I'm currently using a Mac and I've been using Capo to do essentially the same thing and it's worked pretty well so far. If you use a similar software or know of any really good ones, let me know down in the comments. And finally, the third takeaway I got from my lesson today with Isaac is that your steel needs to be mechanically sound. If any pedal steel player is gonna be able to support a band and not detract from the overall sound, they're gonna need to stay in tune and their instrument needs to be rock solid. My current steel has a couple mechanical issues, so I hope to sort those out and really diagnose how my steel works in the upcoming days. My steel is a one-off custom build out of Missouri, and it's nothing special, but I'd love to learn how the mechanics work. That reminds me, thank you to everybody who helped me out with my roll pin problem a few weeks ago. That whole process gave me some insight as to how I can fix a relatively common problem on some pedal steels. Overall, I thought my first lesson could not have gone any better. Learning from Isaac and hearing how his brain works when he thinks about pedal steel was exciting and fun. Hearing someone so dedicated to a craft explain their technique and their learning process and their practices gives me a sense of new energy and excitement towards this instrument. I've been excited and driven over the past 100 plus days, but now I'm passionate about the steel. Special thank you to Isaac for taking the time out of your day to teach me some stuff on the steel. Don't forget to check out Isaac's band, Slowing in the Boats, over on Facebook. And as always, play every day.